Hey everybody, today I want to talk to you about an interesting concept which is reinforcement learning utilizing high dimensional vectors. I'm not sure if I'm the original inventor, if I'm the very first person ever that has done reinforcement learning via high dimensional vectors. None of that is the point of this. The point of this is to demonstrate and to educate. So let's dive into this. The first thing that I want to go over and have people understand uh, I get contacted a lot with regards towards like reinforcement learning overall, right? There's a big misunderstanding, I think, overall with regards towards reinforcement learning. Like, can you use it for LM models? Uh, can you use it for X, Y, Z? I'm showing you in this instance utilizing high dimensional vectors for reinforcement learning to kind of illustrate the concept that you can literally utilize any of these concepts. If I can utilize high dimensional vectors for this. You can utilize LM models, literally any other framework that you could possibly think of. If I can util if I can do it via HDC, it, it, it will work via anything. It's kind of what I want to illustrate for you within that. Second thing is, is uh, what exactly comprises reinforcement learning? I think a lot of people uh, kind of trip themselves up over that, right? And they, they overcomplicate it. Uh, reinforcement learning as a concept isn't that hard. It requires three things. It requires an agent, an environment, and a reward. That's it. Agent who interacts with the environment, who gets a reward for interacting with the environment, and that's it. That's all that it does, right? There's other advancements and things that we can put on top of this, like uh, giving it memory, um, making it explore more or less different things and different features that, that enhance that but that's i mean it's those three things an agent an environment and a reward uh and i mean to my understanding and and my kind of like small brained understanding <laughs> that is like the essence of learning right like um i see animals uh and i see biological creatures, they're all dictated by, by those same concepts. They interact with an environment, they are an agent that interacts with the environment, and they do so based off of reward mechanisms. And those reward mechanisms can be artificially um, inflated and artificially triggered in biological organisms as well, right? So it all comes down to reward. Uh, and then, so within that, like, it's very simplistic to set these things up, right? All you do is you, A, create the environment, B, create the behavior for the agent, and then C, create the reward, reward mechanism for what the agent will be rewarded for. And then in that instance, if you do all those things right, then, then you have an agent that um, will converge to the reward, right? Whether or not that is actually learning is up for debate. I would say, like, from my experiences, like, uh, uh, experimenting overall with, like, every different type of um, AI learning, to me, reinforcement learning seems to be, like, the least uh, learning overall, right? And then, like, why do I make that assumption? Like, let's look at, like, um, so this is a, a, our graph of our simple agent uh, performance, and then this is, like, a much more complex graph of, like, our, like, our super agent, right, in this instance. But what you can see within these, and this is like, um, this is what you would see like from typical uh, like Q learning performance, like from any like this, these um, charts that we're looking at here are very symbolic and, and representative of reinforcement learning to me across the board, right? Uh, and then, but what you see within this is like massive deviation and variation. Like even when we get to like the later episodes, like between like episodes like 100 and 200, we still see massive spikes in the reward, right? Like we see it goes up to a high of 40. Uh, and then the, there's still like several instances where the model scores like a negative reward next to that. And then so it's like, to me, it's more random guessing. <laughs> like, I, the, I don't like the it, the interesting thing is, is that these algorithms converge and they always converge, right? And you can start, you can see like this, the, the convergence, especially here with the improved model towards the end, right? Like the, uh, at the end, we start getting like a higher peak than anywhere else on the baseline. So, and, and I stopped it early, it would have been converging more and more, right? So convergence does happen, but it like, it's like, you have like, just random, 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 and then all of a sudden it turns into something <laughs> eventually, right? Which I, I just intuitively to me doesn't look like learning. Like 
if I look at like if I compare this to like a gradient descent, for example, gradient descent just looks on on a graph much more like learning overall to me. Just highlighting and pointing these things out, uh, and like I, I think that this uh, and and that framing and that mindset kind of does contribute to people's. Um, overall overcomplicating reinforcement learning because it does get into my head when I go through these things, right? I'm like, I don't like, it just, it doesn't seem like it should be working this way, but that's how it works out. Uh, and then, so just diving into very specifically the code here, giving you kind of an overview, I'll give you a co uh, overview of the more complicated model here. But so essentially we want, again, it's our environment, we're placing obstacles in the environment, and then we're placing a reward in the environment, right? So this is like, I mean, all, the the full structure of, of the model. And like, I bring this up because a lot of people, the other thing that they um, try to bash um, AI models around is like, uh, they question whether the models are actually interacting with their environment. Whereas with reinforcement learning, it's, it's clearly built off of an environment. Right? And then the question then being, is there an actual difference between a simulated environment and a real environment, like our physical environment? Um, and then th that brings into uh, philosophical questions in and of itself. But from here, you can clearly see that these are agents interacting with their environments, right? So it's not just um, agents that are predicting tokens in a sequence. They're literally, uh, they're interacting with an environment and interacting with the reward in the environment, just like a duck would, just like you would. And then so when we go through them, we essentially define what the agent can do in the environment, right? So then in this instance, it can move up, down, left, or right. It gets a penalty for a, a, uh, hitting obstacles, uh, but and, and it also gets a small penalty for moving. <laughs> so we want the model to like beeline for a straight line, right? Uh, and then it gets a bonus, a massive reward for reaching the goal. So essentially what we're trying to do within that is balance out, like we want it to reach the goal, but like uh, if we just said like, you can do whatever you want to reach the goal, like the model would just do random stuff and and wouldn't would never beeline towards the goal, right? So we put that small penalty in there for moving that so that it, it creates incentive for it to beeline towards the goal. Uh, and then that's important within this as well is like um, negative rewards are, are a huge part of this. And that's a part that I had to learn intuitively going through reinforcement learning is that so you have positive and negative rewards, right? Uh, and then in this instance, we have our, our positive reward is very specifically hit the goal. <laughs> you hit the goal is positive. But we in order to like in, uh, eliminate additional bad behaviors, we need to put that small penalty for moving in there so that it will beeline towards the goal, right? Uh, and then if we did didn't have that small penalty in there, it would be massive behavioral differences. So negative rewards can be extremely important within how you do this. Uh, and then this is just essentially the, the logic for the agent itself. Uh, and then so it's within like hyperdimensional computing and, and reinforcement learning, we have to set up all of this, right? So it's a lot of math within this, setting up the number of dimensions, the behavior of the model, how much memory it has, how exactly it's going to work, etc. And then so all of this is just like all of the math behind all of that, right? And then all of this is still math behind the agent, but uh, more specifically, like uh, getting into the details of it. So like, uh, how exactly is it going to sample its experiences as it goes through? It's utilizing Q vector algorithms so for like uh, processing memory. So we're putting that in there, uh, finding the best next action. Where like this is like the 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 math for the brain of the model essentially. Uh, and then we get through, and then this is the math for like the the logic, like the body, <laughs> and then. Uh, pretty much it's pretty straightforward and this is the math for the experiment and then this is the math for actually plotting it out and then this is the math for our comparison model so we have uh, essentially in this instance I created two models right so I wanted to secondarily demonstrate to you that um, you can make significant enhancements and improvements within these frameworks right so my first step and my first attempt here within this was like can I actually do this can I get um, an HDC reinforcement learning agent to work uh, enough on this video to demonstrate it here for you. And that's what I do here, right? And then so I get this original guy uh, and then it's like uh, the performance is okay, but I wanted to like optimize it, right? Let's, let's get it to the extreme. Uh, and then so what happens here is we end up with a result of about 7,500% increase in improvement over the baseline model, the first model that we were looking at there. 
by incorporating several additions to the code here. Uh, and then I, I highlight up here like all of the additions that I'm adding into it. So it's like experiment, experience replay, adaptive exploration, more orthogonal state and action vectors, HDC based similarity measures and vector normalization. So I'm putting in like a lot of additional elements into this to uh, enhance it over just the baseline, right? Baseline, can we do it? Okay, we can do it. How do we improve it? Like, how do we take it off the rails from there? And then uh, from there, it's just, you know, adding other known elements within the equation and then beefing it up and then experimenting and then seeing which one of those uh, equations and elements work most broadly across the board, right? You might hit an individual experiment where you add some of those elements to it uh, and then it works in one particular instance, but then you test it in another instance and it all falls apart, right? So I try to go for what works the best overall as opposed to what works the best in an individual instance when I'm fine tuning those things. So putting that out overall, hopefully this gives you more of an introduction and understanding of reinforcement learning overall and a definite uh, introduction into reinforcement learning using high dimensional vectors. I would assume that this is your first time seeing it overall. Uh, if you have seen it before, uh, just let me know. It'd be cool. Like uh, I'll dive further into research in this area. I haven't seen any research of anyone doing it uh, before. Again, my point isn't to claim or to make claims like oh, I'm the the like. I, if I'm open sourcing this, why would I care to be the inventor of it anyway, right? Just highlighting that for for uh, people that want to criticize uh, others for whatever reason that they choose to criticize others for. But uh, if you like this type of content, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.